The following episode covers the criminal life and death of Sana Ojeda from the Santana Gang in Orange County. On June 7, 2018, Peter Sana Ojeda, age 75, and a longtime member of the Mexican Mafia, suffered a fatal heart attack on the operating table from medical complications stemming from decades of heroin and drug usage. He passed away at the Springfield Federal Medical Facility in Missouri. Peter Jess Ojeda was born on April 12, 1943 and grew up in the Artesia area of Santana, California. As a teenager, he adopted the nickname Sana and became a lifelong member of one of the most notorious Orange County street gangs known as Santana. He joined F Troop, one of the most infamous cliques or clicas from the Santana Street Barrio. From the streets of the OC to the California and federal prison system, the name Sana from Santana would become a household name in the street and prison underworld. Like most Mexican-American gang members, Sana became a heroin user as a teenager. The graduation from alcohol to marijuana and pills was the gateway for many street youngsters leading to the ultimate destroyer, the deadly dragon, the term many of us assigned to heroin. In 1965, Sana was convicted of heroin smuggling and was sentenced to the California Department of Corrections where he became familiar with prison politics and life behind bars in state prison. Sana gravitated to members of the Southern California gang community and particularly those convicts from the Mexican Mafia prison gang. At the age of 28, Sana Ojeda became the second street gang member from Orange County to be recruited into the Mexican Mafia. I know this because I personally participated in the vote to make him an Emek Arnal. Sana had already been preceded by a younger Orange County inmate we recruited in San Quentin named David Aguirre, also known to us as David O.C. A few months after David O.C. was made, Sana was sponsored at the Tehachapi prison by longtime MM member Raymond Bevito Alvarez from Wilmas. Sana's M.A. co-sponsors, shown here, were Ronnie Salazar and Thomas Elmo Duran, both from the Barro Nuevo Strata Court Street Gang. Sana's name was circulated to the other state prisons, and there were no negative votes prohibiting his formal induction. His street and prison credentials preceded him, and we all voted thumbs up. In a fraternity that was predominantly populated by Los Angeles Street Gang members, Orange County introduced its first two representatives in La M in 1971. The way the Mexican Mafia induction process generally works goes something like this. As a common rule of thumb, you don't ask to join. Instead, the M comes knocking on your door. The M calls you. Contrary to some beliefs, becoming an emic or not is not like joining a club or some loose fraternity. You don't fill out an application. You don't submit an oral request. First and foremost, you have to be M.A. material. By that I mean you must be willing to kill for the organization at the drop of the hat, even if your life is placed in grave danger. The real litmus test takes place in the prison system. Nobody really cares what you've done on the outside as anyone can pull a trigger and act crazy. On the inside, you literally have nowhere to run or hide from an adversary, and your worthiness was pretty much determined by your propensity for violence and your leadership abilities behind bars. Although many of us were already convicted killers, that wasn't necessarily the precondition for joining. My little sister could pull a trigger. Scouting talent is like an art form, and Sana Ojeda fulfilled the requirement for the fellas. As La M flexed its muscles inside the prison system, 
It developed legends and heroes for younger street and imprisoned gang members to emulate. What you did on the outside was known in the neighborhoods where you navigated and performed. But your criminal resume was not complete until you performed on the inside. This is what defined a prison gang member. When you paroled back to the gang environment from where you came from, MM members would receive the red carpet treatment. I will compare it with the war hero who comes home from Vietnam or any other military guy who serves his country honorably, especially in combat. In the case of Sana and men like him, their service was to the black hand and their battlefield was inside the concrete jungles of San Quentin, Folsom, Pelican Bay, and a host of prison facilities that populate the state of California. Orange County was Sana Ojeda's manifest destiny. It would literally become his personal domain. The inside controls the outside. That was an old saying we had back in the day which holds true to this day. A few hundred prison gang members, most of them doing life sentences, exert power and influence over tens of thousands of loyal street soldiers. Status drives the street gang member, and being connected to La M is like reaching a mountaintop. The courage and dedication demonstrated by hardcore gang members frustrates those who look at the wasted talent and the surrender of their future to a life in prison. Pay a visit someday to the Rancho Los Amigos Rehabilitation Center in Downey, California. It will literally break your heart. I saw dozens and dozens of wounded, paralyzed young gang members, and I observed the type of carnage and damage I was once a part of. When you live that life, blind eyes do not allow you to really see the pain and suffering you are inflicting on others and their families. Today, I have no time for those who talk about gang honor or who say things like, if you choose that life, stay the course. Visit Rancho Los Amigos with an open mind and heart. And then be honest with yourself. After witnessing the destruction of young lives and their broken bodies, I wonder how you feel about the gang life. The Kool-Aid served up by groups like La M begins with gang status. The 1980s ushered in a period in which two Orange County MA members wrestled for some of the area control. The fellow member vying for the affection of Orange County gangs was Mike Musclehead Salinas from the Del I gang in Santana. While housed in the Orange County jail, Musclehead was very active exerting control over the inmates housed with him. Remember, the inside controls the outside. The second component that brings gang members into the MF fold is the element of fear. There is an understandable apprehension that resisting La M's wishes and not functioning under their street program will inevitably place a green light on those who do not comply. The ability of La M to enforce their green light hit list on the streets in the county jails and in state and federal prisons is the number one deterrent to any gang member who even thinks about not functioning under the MF program. When all was said and done, we can talk all day long about people from La M who were envious of Sana's success in Orange County or fellow OC members who wanted a piece of the action. There would be others to try to compete with Sana, but make no mistake about it, Sana was the historical king of his empire and would rule with an iron fist. At the end of the day, no matter how you cut it, he was a street genius and Orange County, for better or for worse, would have one of its own running the show and overseeing approximately 100 documented gangs. Sana Ojeda placed the OC on the map for sure. 
as in Los Angeles and other California gang areas where the Eme gospel was spreading like a cancer. The number 13, representing the 13th letter of the alphabet and the letter M, would begin to appear throughout Orange County in gang graffiti attached to the various street gangs. Like the Pope speaking to a Catholic congregation, surveillance photos and footage show Orange County's Mexican Mafia boss laying down the law to a street gang audience at El Salvador Park in Santana in January 1992. Like John the Baptist preparing the way for the Messiah, the Eme pioneer preached a message of peace in Orange County. Hundreds of youngsters were blessed to be in the presence of a big homie, their faces reflecting the importance of his message. No more drive-bys, he commanded. Even the manner in which he waved his hand simulated the appearance of a minister blessing his flock. Sana utilized former gang members turned Christian in his master scheme to control the MS drug and tax program in the OC. He also encouraged Mexican-American gang members to redirect their gang rage against African-American gang members. Anyone familiar with Orange County knows very well there are hardly any blacks in that region, let alone gang members. Nevertheless, it was a successful galvanizing tactic he used very efficiently, and every gang cop and neighborhood citizen knew exactly what was playing out. There were community and civic leaders who applauded and embraced Sana's efforts, and how could anyone blame people for desiring the cessation of human bloodshed in their neighborhoods. Hey, thumbs up to Sana and the fellas for bringing peace and tranquility to the barrios, right? Ah, but don't be deceived, folks, for Sana was the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing. He succeeded in bringing rival gangs together under the Sureño flag, and more importantly, under Mexican mafia control. Any gang who defied his edicts would be green-lighted with every other gang churning against the offender. If you successfully eluded, sooner or later you would end up in the county jail or in prison where you could no longer run or hide. Like I said, the inside controls the outside. Sana's tenacious Orange County rule would touch on four decades, surrounding himself with loyal soldiers and gang crews who faithfully made up the enforcement teams on his behalf. On May 1, 1995, the first Mexican Mafia RICO prosecution was handed down with most of their street bosses taken into custody. All but one were ultimately convicted and sentenced to life in prison. In Orange County, Sana and his troopers successfully continued to elude authorities, and he was not caught up in the federal racketeering indictments because he was already in custody on gun charges. With heroin and meth permeating the streets of Southern California, Sana, his crew, his drug dealers, and those gang members who understood how to profit from the principle of supply and demand possessed the ultimate opportunity of generating as much revenue as they were willing to work for. The sky was the limit. Status and fear, two important components the Emmet preys upon in the control of the street gang member. The third is money. The big seduction cannot be complete without that easy money. So in 2005, the feds finally caught up with Sana. He was indicted of federal conspiracy and racketeering charges, convicted a year later and would never again see the outside. From federal custody, Sana ruled his Orange County domain by employing loyal enforcers who facilitated the sales of drugs, the taxing of street gangs, and a large chunk of the criminal business that took place on the outside and in the Orange County Jail. This was all accomplished from his maximum security cell. Through this time period, other full-fledged Mexican Mafia members would appear on the Orange County scene but up until the day Sana passed away, 
none would ever pose a serious threat to his kingdom. Sana commanded respect from many, many feared him, and a vast majority of gang members both resented and disliked his ruthless and disdainful method of operating on the streets of Orange County. Of course, they would never tell him this to his face. But all complied with his program. Everyone knew the consequences of defying a big homie, a Mexican mafia made man. In 2007, one of the newer Mexican mafia members to appear on the Orange County scene was Armando Mando Moreno, who was recruited because of his propensity for earning money as a heroin dealer. With Sana in the federal prison system and in his 60s, Mando took advantage of the opportunity to attempt to secure the vast territory Sana had so meticulously cultivated. Internal politicking would ensue, with Mando surrounding himself with loyal Orange County associates who lined up versus the seasoned and feared Sana Ojeda. The power struggle and infighting began, and the Orange County Jail, also known as Theo Lacey, was center stage with the county facility equally divided. In January of 2010, Mexican Mafia members from Orange County met with Carnales from L.A. County in an attempt to end the war between the Sana and Mando factions. Predictably, the fellows decided Orange County belonged to the long-standing member Sana Ojeda. The most damning information against Mando was the revelation he was once a member of a predominantly black gang who were known for lining up against Mexican-American gangs. This sealed his doom. Mondo, who recognized his days as a member in good standing were numbered, hung up his gloves and became a cooperative witness against his short-lived Mexican Mafia rival. In July 2011, Sana and nearly a hundred associates were indicted in what was known as Operation Black Flag. In 2015, at the age of 72, Sana was sentenced to an additional 14 years in federal prison. Alberto Puppet Vargas was one of 99 people named in the July federal indictment. According to one of the indictment counts, Puppet was said to have issued an order on December 25, 2010, that all Orange County inmates who were interviewed on the MSNBC show Lockdown were to be killed because they violated the code of conduct of the Mexican Mafia. Two inmates in Theo Lacey were assaulted within the week. Sana's death created an instant vacuum in which the heir to the Orange County throne would become an issue. In several earlier recorded telephone conversations, MM member Big Joe Ponce was overheard claiming his right to function in Orange County without the permission of Sana. Other Orange County MM members were already poised to move in on the iron-fisted rule of Sana Ojeda. His death would make the transition a smooth one. During Sana's last months on the streets of La Habra, from where he lived and based his personal life and his criminal street operations, Sana was exposed to people who loved and cared for him. They continuously encouraged him to surrender himself to God. They describe him as being torn and almost tormented about his obligation to his criminal brothers and his lack of a true relationship with the Lord. People often think about God when they're close to death, when a loved one dies, or when they're up there in years doing life in prison, or simply reflecting on where life is taking you. At the end of the day, it's never too late. For those who may wish to judge someone like Sana, they either do not know God themselves or simply do not have a clue. No one can judge Sana Ojeda and no one but God can know his heart, especially in the end. It is my hope and prayer that Sana made his peace with his God before he departed from this earth. 